Hello and welcome again to this particular session as you can see on flashing on your screen. So in this particular session we are going to actually start India's 23. Quite obviously each one of you are well aware of this particular fact that this particular standard deals with borrowing cost and it is similar to your existing accounting standard AS16 which you have already gone through in your earlier phases of education. There is hardly any difference. Still we will start from the scratches as if you are unaware of anything regarding this particular this particular standard whether existing standard or NDS. anyway so we start India's 23 borrowing costs so first of all let's have an idea of what exactly this particular standard deals up with and what is the crux issue and what is the theme of this particular standard and in order to comprehend that particular point let's have a look straight away over this particular example and then I will be in a better position and you will be in a better position to comprehend what exactly is the theme of this standard. There is an entity and this entity has taken a loan of let us say 1000 lakhs correct and we further presume that the loan has been taken at the rate of 12%. Now the amount of loan as you can see is very huge amount that is 1000 lakhs isn't it. And the loan amount has been taken on 1 for 2023 and the intention of the loan and the purpose of the loan which we purpose of the loan is that we want to construct a plant correct in order to construct the plant we took the loan on 1 for 2023 however as given here that the construction of this particular plant commenced on 30th of june 2023 so even though the loan has been taken on 1-4-2023, as we can see, actually construction has started on 30th of June 2023. So it is important for you to understand that when you are going to take a loan and your purpose is that with the help of that particular loan, either you want to acquire, acquire any asset or you want to construct an asset or you want to produce an asset. If the intention is acquisition, as I told you, or construction or production. So if we borrow funds in connection with acquisition, as I just told you, acquisition, construction or production of an asset, then how we are going to treat the interest which we are going to pay on such loan, that is the theme of this particular standard. Is it clear to you? It is as simple as that. Now you must have noticed that in that in this particular case, the loan amount has been taken on 1 for 2023, whereas the construction is starting on 30th of June 2023. That means for the first three months from April to, to June, no construction activity took place. So the interest on this particular loan of 1000 lakhs at the rate of 12% for the first three months will be treated as revenue loss. Reason being is that even though the loan has been taken for the purpose of, purpose of in this particular case, construction of plant, but the construction activity was not started on that particular date. So whatever interest which you are going to pay from 1st of April till 30th of June, it will be charged to a statement of profit and loss account. However, once the construction activity will start, then after that, whatever interest you are going to pay in this particular what we call loan, that particular interest will be capitalized. Is it clear to you or not? For example, question states that on 30th of June, the construction has commenced. And when we reach the end of the first accounting year, that is 31st of the 2024, we are given that construction activity is still ongoing, it is still it is continuing, the construction continues. So that means whatever interest which is related to the period pertaining to 30th of June till 31st of the 2024, the interest for this particular period will be capitalized. The reason being is that during this particular phase, due, during this particular phase, the asset is under construction, the, the construction activity has started and it is continuing. So now the point which you need to note is that when you borrow funds for the acquisition, for the construction or production of asset, and once the construction activity commences or commences, after that you will start capitalizing the interest that means whatever interest which you are going to pay for this particular period correct that is from 30th of june till 30th of june 23 till what we call 31st of the 2024 that is nine months so interest of the nine months you are not going to debit it to your profit or loss account rather you are going to debit it to your asset account that means you are going to capitalize this particular interest so borrowing costs are capitalized once the construction activity commences and it will and we will keep on capitalizing the interest 
till the construction activity will get completed. It is very important to understand one important aspect. Once the construction activity, once the construction activity starts, correct? Once the construction activity starts, and till it gets completed, till it gets completed, so whatever interest which we would pay on the funds which we have borrowed, so interest for this particular period will be capitalized. That means we will keep on capitalize the interest till the what we call asset gets completed. And in more simpler words, just to uh, simplify the things, I will say that during this particular stage, the asset is qualifying qualifying that qualifying stage means when construction activity has commenced and it hasn't yet completed the moment construction activity will get completed or the asset will be complete complete means it is ready to use in that case i would say the asset has become qualified qualified so in simple words now we can say that interest will be capitalized if the asset is qualifying because if asset is qualifying means construction activity is still on and asset is not fully prepared. But the moment the asset is fully prepared or completed after that we will stop capitalizing the what we call interest or the borrowing cost as we call it also interest is also known as borrowing cost. So we will, we will stop capitalizing the interest and after that Quite obviously, we will charge the interest cost to, as I told you, profit and loss account. Is it clear to you or not? Yes, absolutely clear. Now, let us say the next year it starts on 1-4-2024. And quite obviously, the construction is still on, as I have already told you. And now, when we reach 31st of 12, 2024, that means the next year begin on 1-4-2024, correct? Next year begin on 1-4-2024 and as you can see that interest for this particular period will be charged. I'm sorry because of phone. So next year started on 1-4-2024 and, act and construction activity got completed on 31st of 12-2024. So quite obviously in the next year, Whatever interest which is related to this particular period from 1-4-2024 till the asset get completed. During this particular period, whatever interest we are going to pay, that interest will be capitalized. Because during this particular stage also asset was under construction or asset was qualifying. But now because on 31st or 12, 2024, this asset has completed. So now we will stop capitalizing the interest cost or borrowing cost and after this particular date whatever interest we are going to pay that will be charged to statement of profit and loss account is it clear to you or not so after having a bit of idea regarding borrowing cost let's come now over to this particular point what we mean by borrowing cost i already told you borrowing cost means interest and other cost because often when we take the loan we may have to incur interest cost file charges some other cost also so whenever i would say interest automatically you include other cost also so borrowing cost are interest and other cost that an entity incurs in connection with the borrowing of the funds and borrowing costs are capitalized if borrowing costs are directly related to you are going to capitalize the borrowing cost that is interest cost if borrowing costs are directly related to acquisition construction or production as i told you of a qualifying asset of a qualifying asset in simple words i told you the meaning of qualifying asset qualifying asset in simple words means the stage when the construction has commenced and asset is and construction activity is still ongoing correct so during this particular phase we may say asset is qualifying and once the construction activity or the activity to prepare the asset once they will get completed the asset will become qualified However, standard defines the qualifying asset in a different manner. It says that qualifying asset, qualifying asset is one which necessarily actually takes a substantial period of time before they become ready for the intended use. Correct? That means qualifying asset, quite obviously, when I am going to construct a plant, it will consume a substantial period of time before I will be able to uh, use it as per my intention, as per my desires and aspires. Is it clear to you or not? 
all borrowing costs are capitalized if asset is qualifying i have already told you and asset will not be qualifying once it gets completed after that whatever interest or borrowing cost which we are going to incur will be charged to statement of profit or loss account is it clear to you or not and here the qualifying asset definition is given to you that qualifying asset is one which necessarily takes a substantial period of time to get it ready for the intended use or sale correct and the examples are given for example inventories even when we purchase the inventory it will take a substantial period of time before we are able to convert them into finished goods Similarly, manufacturing plants. Manufacturing plants obviously will require a huge time before they are able, we are able to complete them. Similarly, power generation plants or what we call facilities or intangible assets because lots of research work need to be done over there before intangible assets can be completed and can be used. So, these are some examples of what we call qualifying asset. Even example of qualifying asset is investment properties. Investment properties are those properties which are meant uh, for which are kept by the uh, by the owners either to earn some rental income or for capital appreciation purpose similarly bare air plants they require a substantial period of time before they become ready for use correct now in case number four i am going to ask you a very simple question let us say f4 limited is an entity and this entity purchases a car and in order to purchase the car it also takes some funds it borrows some funds Quite obviously, this entity has borrowed funds to purchase the car. So, quite obviously, this particular entity will have to incur some borrowing cost, that is interest cost. Now, my question is, in fact, the question is, what is the treatment of borrowing cost? Now, suppose whatever, suppose we are paying some interest on the borrowing funds. So, what will be the treatment of those borrowing costs, that is interest cost, which the entity will have to incur? Because this time you have purchased the car. And car is not a qualifying asset because a qualifying asset is one which takes a substantial period of time before it becomes ready for use. But here, when we are going to purchase the car, car is already ready to use. Are you getting, point, getting my point or not? So in this case, no substantial period is required. So point here which you need to note is that this time the car is not a qualifying asset. So whatever interest we are going to pay on the, on the funds which we have borrowed, those borrowing costs will have to be charged to a statement of profit or loss account. Similarly, in case study 2, it is given to you that F5 Limited is a telecom company, correct? It is a telecom company in telecommunications, uh, it is engaged and it acquires a 5G license. Quite obviously, this particular entity is engaged in telecom sector, as I told you. So, it is interested in what we call acquiring a 5G license because it wants to provide such services. Now the management intends to use it to use it to operate a wireless network. So quite obviously this particular company is interested in operating a wireless network service, correct, which will provide 5G services. But point here is that development of network can commence only when the license has been acquired. When the license has been acquired. Unless and until I am not going to acquire the license, I cannot start the development of the network. So obviously we need to understand that in order to develop the wireless network operating system it, re it will require quite a bit of time before, before we are able to complete the wireless network operational system so we may say in this particular case that wireless network operators shall be considered as a uh, operation sorry shall be considered as qualifying asset because it will require a pretty long period of time before we are able to get it ready for use so that is the reason in this case wireless network will be considered as qualifying asset and during this particular stage obviously the borrowing cost will be capitalized case study three and it's an interesting question case study three says that f6 limited is engaged in a shipping business so f6 limited is having a business of shipping business and on 30th of june 2021 correct it enters into a contract with a ship manufacturing company. It enters into a contract with a company which manufactures the ship. And we have a shipping business. So we might be needing a ship. So we entered into a contract with this particular supplier that is manufacturer of the ship. And we ask them to uh, supply us one ship or build one ship for us. 
the supplier shall deliver the ship on 31st of 3, 2023 as it will start manufacturing the ship on 30th of June 2021. Try to understand this particular point. Here what is happening is on 30th of June 2021 we are entering into a contract with the ship manufacturing company or with the suppliers. Now suppliers are telling that we will start manufacturing the ship on this particular date itself. Correct? We will start manufacturing. However, we are not going to deliver you the ship by the end of this accounting year itself. The current accounting year will end on 31st, 3, 2022. The suppliers are telling us that they are going to deliver the ship to us at the end of the next year, that is 31st of 3, 2023. It is written very clearly that suppliers shall deliver the ship on 31st, 3, 2023 although they will start what we call manufacturing the ship on 30th of June 2021. And further it is given that on 30th of June 2021, this entity F6 Limited has raised a loan of 500 lakhs at 10% per annum for the same. That means in order to get the ship built, we have, we have means the F6 Limited have raised a loan of 500 crores. So on 30th of June, we have raised a loan. So quite obviously we will start paying the interest from this day onward. But whatever interest which we are going to pay, that interest will be capitalized from this particular day, 30th of June till 31st of 3, 2023. Are you getting my point or not? Because the construction activity has started on this particular date and it will get completed. The ship will get completed on 31st, 3, 2023 because on this date it will be delivered to us. So, during this particular phase, we may say the asset is qualifying asset. Are you getting my point? Because construction activity has commenced and till 31st, 3, 2023, on this date, asset will get completed and will become qualified. So, from this particular date till this particular date, asset will be considered as qualifying asset. And because asset is a qualifying asset, whatever interest during this particular stage or phase, the entity will incur that particular interest or borrowing cost will have to be capitalized. Correct? What exactly the borrowing cost are, we have already discussed this particular point that borrowing cost includes interest cost, finance cost, and it includes one another important point, exchange differences arising from foreign currency borrowings to the extent they are regarded as an adjustment to interest cost. What does it mean? We have kept two separate big problem, very advanced level problem at the last then over there, I will try to tell you this particular point. Come to case study 4. This particular case study states that on 1-4-2021, on 2021 entity took 100 lakhs as loan for construction of an asset. So, an entity took a loan of 100 lakhs on 1-4-2021 and the first accounting year ended on 31st of 3-2022. On 31st, 3, 2023, the second year has ended and here it is given that entity repays the entire amount of loan. We have taken a loan of 100 lakh and originally when we took the loan from the financial institution because I have put up this particular line and here I have written due date of repayment of loan is 31st of 3, 2024. We took the loan on 1-4-2024 Logically, we, we were supposed to pay uh, or repay the amount of the loan on 31st of 3, 2024. But prior to the due date, that is on 31st of 3, 2023, the entity repays the entire loan. Now, you might be wondering that we are paying the loan much before the stipulated date. So, quite obviously, we will get what we call some discount. No. If you are going to pay the loan before the maturity date, you will be penalized for the same. That's the interesting point which you need to know. Yes, that, that happens in practical life. If we are going to pay the loan before the maturity date, some penalty charges are imposed upon us. And that is exactly what happened. Some prepayment charges were imposed to the extent of 1 lakh. Now, the question is, are prepayment charges borrowing cost? No, as per... This particular standard on borrowing cost, interest and other cost incurred in connection with borrowing of funds are considered as borrowing cost but not 
prepayment charges. A declarative prepayment charges are not considered as borrowing cost. Now some major points which we need to come across this particular standard. The major points are, three major points are there. That when we should start capitalization or borrowing cost. Number one, and when to suspend the capitalization or borrowing cost. Suspend means temporary stoppage. Correct? Suspension. And when to seize the capitalization or borrowing cost. When to seize the capitalization or borrowing cost means when to permanently stop capitalize, capitalizing the borrowing cost. So all these three points we are going to discuss now one by one. Now the point here is that we have already gone through the first point. When to begin the capitalization of the borrowing cost. Logically we should start capitalizing the what we call borrowing cost when the construction activities which are necessary are commenced correct once the construction activity commences we will start what we call now capitalizing the borrowing cost so point here is that when to suspend the capitalization of borrowing cost this is very important when capitalization of borrowing cost should be suspended the standard specifies that capitalization of borrowing cost should be suspended paused or stopped suspend it it means should be paused or should be stopped temporarily when active development is interrupted due to reasons beyond our control and such a stoppage is not a necessary condition for ultimate condition try to understand this point the question says that when capitalization or borrowing cost should be suspended that means when we should suspend for a while capitalizing the borrowing cost correct when we should suspend. Let us say on 1-4-2021, correct, till 31-3-2023, some construction activity is going on. From 1-4-2021 till 31-3-2023, some construction activity is going on. And in the next year, next year quite obviously will start from 1-4-2022. In the next year, what happened? Till 30th of June 2023, that means the next year will commence on 1-4, on 1-4, 2023. 1-4, 2022, sorry. So, from 1-4, 2022 till 30th of June 2023, question says that active development, active development is stopped due to labor strikes and reasons were not controlled, not within our control. Correct? Try to understand this point. What happens sometimes the construction activity gets stopped due to some reasons which are not in our control. For example, a dispute has taken place between the what we call trade union and the management or for the distant labor has gone into some strike or due to some political condition, political riots have taken place, the construction activity has, has to be stopped. So these are the reasons which are not in our control. So if your construction activity is stopped or suspended for a while temporarily, that you can see construction activity got suspended from 1-4-2022 till 30th of June 2023. During, this, during these six months, the construction activity is stopped due to reasons, let us say labor strike, let us say due to some natural causes, let us say due to some riots, let us say for any reason which was not in our control. In that case, during this particular period, I am not going to capitalize the borrowing cost. Suspension of borrowing cost means I, for a while I have stopped, for a while I have stopped capitalizing the borrowing cost. That means during this particular period, whatever interest cost will be there, that interest cost will be charged to profit and loss account. Interest cost will be charged to profit and loss account. Correct? And let us say, let us say after this particular date, the construction resumed and it continues till 31st of 3, 2023. So once again, we will charge, we will capitalize the borrowing cost. Is it clear to you or not? So point here is that sometimes the construction activity is temporarily stopped. And if it is stopped, it is stopped or interrupted due to reasons which are not in our control. In that particular case, during this particular period, during this particular period or phase, we are not going to actually, we are not going to capitalize the borrowing cost. Rather, we are going to charge it to profit and loss account. 
So here I have written also that capitalization of borrowing cost shall be suspended for the period 31st 3, 2022 till 30th of June 2022. That is borrowing cost incurred during this particular period will be charged to profit and loss account. Correct. Now the next question is capital, capitalization of borrowing cost should not be suspended. See, borrowing cost should be suspended means we should not capitalize it. Now, this time we are going to discuss that even though the work has suspended or stopped or temporarily stopped, but during this particular period, borrowing cost will not be suspended. That means we will continue capitalizing it. When substantial technical and administrative work is being carried out, and there is temporary delay stoppage, but such stoppage interruption is a necessary condition for the final completion. Try to understand, you will not be able to understand if I will try to make you understand just through these lines. First, have a look over here. Let us say there is an entity and it is constructing a bridge on a river. Correct? There is an entity and it is constructing a bridge. Let us say this bridge is being constructed and let us say this is the river. Correct? And bridge is being constructed over, over it. Now construction got interrupted. The construction activity got interrupted or stopped or paused for the period, let us say 30th of June till 30th of September 2022 due to high waters and high winds that are very common in that particular area. We are constructing a bridge over this particular river. But problem is that from 30th of June, uh, from 30th of June 2022 till 30th of September 2022, I know that in this particular area, in this particular area, actually, there are high water waves and very high speed winds blow. So, now try to understand. And if I will continue the activity even during this particular phase, so there could be what we call some casualties. Correct? And there may be some other type of losses. So it is very hazardous to continue the work during this particular period because of high water and because of high winds. So it is better that we should cool down. We should stop the work during this particular period. However, we are stopping the work this time, not because of any reason which are not in our control. Correct? Because we know that in this particular area, the high winds are very common and high water waves are very common. So it is unsafe to actually continue the construction activity over here. So it is better to pause your what we call construction activity for these months. So here the point which you need to understand is that here is stoppage of work becomes a necessary condition before you are able to safely complete the project. Here the stoppage has become a necessary condition before you are able to safely conduct the construction activity. Because if you are going to co conduct the construction activity in this particular phase, then it is very unsafe. So for the final completion of the project, it is a necessary condition that you should stop. So when we stop the work, correct, on account of such reasons, so during this particular phase, even though we are not, we are not constructing anything, so in this particular phase, we will still continue capitalizing the borrowing cost. I hope you got the difference between the earlier one and the, this one. In the earlier case, a stoppage of necessary work was not a necessary condition for the final completion. The work was stopped due to labor strike, due to riots, due to political situations, due to natural reasons, correct? But here, it is a necessary condition so that we can safely complete the work. Is it clear to you? So if the condition is such that it is necessary for you to stop, to, to pause the work for a while, then during this particular phase, you will keep on capitalizing the borrowing cost. You are not going to suspend it. Is it clear to you or not? Another question. One for two. Mm -hmm. Now, on 1-4-2021, entity deals in botanical seeds production. Let us say there is a particular entity and it deals in botanical seeds production. It produces botanical seeds and the entity knows that 
it requires a substantial period for the right kind of maturing. Correct? For the right kind of maturing, uh, it requires a substantial period of time. So quite obviously, they are qualifying as it. For two months, the activities got stopped due to bad weather. And this weather is not conducive for the right kind of maturing. So again, it is a necessary condition to stop the work during these two months so that we get the what we call botanical seeds into right kind of maturing. So during these two months, even though no activity is on, still we are going to continue what we call capitalizing the borrowing cost. The borrowing cost will not be suspended. The capitalization of borrowing cost will not be suspended. Rather, it will continue. Correct? So you can go through case study 9 of your own because this is similar to the one which we have done. When capitalization of borrowing cost should cease, so when we should permanently stop cap capitalizing the borrowing cost. Obviously, the capitalization of borrowing cost, correct, let us say we are producing a three-story building, a three-story building, correct? And let us say this building has got completed. This building has got completed. So, because this building has got completed, now we are going to seize the, seize the means complete stoppage. We are going to seize the capitalization of borrowing cost. Once the building will get complete, we, after this, we are not going to capitalize the borrowing cost. Because this asset has become qualified, this, become, this asset has become what we call completed and all the necessary activities which are necessary to complete the uh, asset are completed. So after this particular date, we are not going to uh, capitalize the borrowing cost. Number one point. Sometimes one ha what happens, the asset gets completed, but some minor activities are still remaining. For example, decoration activities, some technical survey activities. So it is, so these activities are considered irrelevant. Correct? Let us say this building is completed, but some minor technical activities are remaining. So, irrespective of that, we are going to stop capitalizing the borrowing cost. Another point is that, let us say this building, as I have already told you, it is a three-story building, ground floor, first floor and second floor. Correct? Let us say all the floors are completed, then automatically nothing will be uh, capitalized. However, let us say first floor is completed, second floor is completed, but still work is going on in ground floor. So in this particular case, we will stop capitalizing the borrowing cost for the in proportion to in proportion to the floors which have been completed. Is it clear to you? However, for this portion, whatever borrowing cost which we may incur, because this particular portion is still incompleted, that means we will continue capitalizing the borrowing cost. But because these two portions have completed, we will stop what we call borrowing cost. Is it clear to you or not? So sometime the project gets completed in parts. So for the completed parts, you will stop capitalizing the borrowing cost. For the incompleted parts, you will continue what we call capitalizing the borrowing cost. Now pay it another attention. Let us say, this is a case of a mill, sugar mill, correct? And it has got three components. And we have completed the first two components and the third component is not yet completed. But the point here is that we cannot start the production unless all the three portions are completed because these three portions are interrelated. So, in this case, you will presume that if that is uh, that as if the building is not at all completed. So that means when the components are interrelated, we have to see to it. In that particular case, we cannot apply the what we call earlier formula. For, for instance, earlier I said that these two portions are completed. So we should stop what we call borrowing cost with, with respect to these two portions. But here I cannot apply the same thing and same analogy. The reason being is that this time all these three components are interrelated. So it means if the structure is such, correct, 
if the project is such where the components are interrelated so even though the components some po some components are completed and some components are incompleted you irrespective of that you will continue what we call capitalizing the borrowing cost till the entire structure becomes completed so these are the things which you need to be in the know for example now we pick up case study 10 to make the point a little bit more clear case study 10 a business park comprising several buildings each of which can be used individually each of which can be used individually they are not interdependent some buildings have been completed while some are still under construction so in this case what will happen in this case capitalization or borrowing cost will be seized for those buildings that are capable of being used while capitalization or borrowing costs shall continue for the buildings which are still under construction this is the same point which I talked about the buildings, correct? Now, case study 11. An industrial plant having 78 processes, 78 processes, it is an industrial plant, which are carried out in sequence at different parts of the plants within the same site, such as a steel mill. Indirectly, it means there are 78 processes and these 78 processes are carried out in a sequence at different part of the plant, but in, but on the same site. That is like a steel mill. 18 processes are capable of being used. In this case, in this case, capitalization or borrowing cost shall not cease for those processes that are capable of being used as used as plant cannot be used for the intended use unless all the processes are completed we cannot we cannot use the plant so that is the reason borrowing cost will continue i hope you got the point here correct now after having finished till up to this particular stage we will continue in the next not next session after five minutes we'll take a five minutes of break and then we'll come back again to meet you I received some messages that, sir, we need a bit of break. Okay, fine.
to welcome again correct after having a look over the first 11 case study now we move over to case study 12 in case study 12 what is given to us let's have a look over here one one four two thousand twenty one it is given that actually accounting here starts on 1 4 2021 and given to us that on 1 5 2021 NGT took a loan for construction of building on 1 5 2021 we took a loan and on 1 1 2022 the construction completed and building was put to use and accounting year ends on 31st of 3 2022 correct Accounting year is ending on 31st of 3, 2022. And question says that interest is 25 lakh for the year. So whatever loan you took, interest for the year is 25 lakh. Interest for the year is 25 lakh. But out of that 25 lakh, what I will have to do now, I will have to compute the time period from this particular date. From this particular date. Mm -hmm. what is happening right from this particular date till this particular date correct so that mean if i am going to compute the time period that will be equal to eight months it will be equal to eight months so out of 12 months because interest is related to 12 months so out of 12 months eight months interest will be capitalized and rest of the interest will have to be treated as revenue expenditure interest for 12 months is actually interest for 12 months is 25 lakhs interest is to be capitalized now your answer should be because it is given to you interest is 25 lakh for the year in fact we took the loan on 1 5 2021 i'm extremely, extremely sorry we took the loan on 1-5-2021. That means this interest is for 11 months. So for 11 months, the interest is 25 lakhs. And out of these 11 months, what will be the interest for 8 months? So 8 into 25 lakh divided by 11. This much of interest will be capitalized. This much of interest will be capitalized. Is it clear to you? So this much of interest will be equal to 8 into 25 divided by 11 that is equal to 18.18 18.18 you are going to capitalize is it clear to you and rest of the interest from 25 you subtract 18.18 and rest of the interest that is equal to 6 point 6.82 it will be charged to profit and loss account Correct, because this, because for this particular period, the asset is qualifying asset. Now we come over to another important point that is specific borrowing. What we mean by specific borrowing? Specific borrowing means particular. When we take the loan specifically for acquisition or construction or production of the asset, that is known as specific borrowings. So, point which you need to understand regarding specific borrowings is on 1 4 2021 entity raised a loan of 1000 lakhs at 10 percent per annum for construction of a plant on 1 4 2021 and till 31st of 3 2021 till the end of the year accounting uh, the construction is, is still on question also says that out of 1000 loan which we took 800 lakhs were used for construction and remaining 200 lakhs invested temporarily Temporarily in securities and interest and dividend received on the same is equal to 20 lakhs. So how much I am going to capitalize? The point is that actually our actual borrowing cost is 1000 is the amount of loan. Rate of interest is 10%. So 100 lakh is my interest charges for the year. However, because some portion of the loan was invested in security and from there, I earn an income of 20 lakh in the form of interest or dividend. I will subtract the same to find out what amount I am going to actually treat for uh, capitalization. So interest to be capitalized, that is 80 lakh because this is a net interest expenditure for us. And during this entire phase, 
this particular asset is under construction. So whatever net interest of 80 lakhs is there, that interest will be capitalized. Is it clear to you or not? Similarly, we take the case study 14. On 1-4-2001, construction commenced and on 1-10-2021, entity raised a loan of 20 crores at 10% per annum for construction of the plant. Correct? On 1-4, on 1-10-2021, entity raised a loan of 20 crores at 10% per annum for the construction of the plant. And on 31st of 3, 2021, construction is, is still on. First of all, we need to understand that 15 crores were used for construction and remaining 5 crores invested tem in temporary securities and interest and dividend received on the same is 0 0.5 crores. See, even though you have started the construction on 1-4-2021, here you did not uh, take any loan. In fact, construction is on during the entire year, but you took the loan on 1-10-2021. First of all, you are going to compute the amount of interest. So from 1-10-2021 till 31st of 3-2021, six months period is there. So first of all, you try to find out your actual borrowing cost. Actual borrowing cost means the actually the interest which you are going to spend. Because you have taken a loan of 20 crore and the rate of interest is 10% for this particular period. You took the loan on 1-10-2021. So for the year ended, your borrowing cost is equal to 1 crore. No doubt about that. Your interest is 1 crore. But because some portion of the loan was invested and from there on you earned an income of 0.5 crore, your net, your net interest cost is 0 0.05 crores. But the point is that, actually 0 0.95 crores, but the point is that this entire interest will be capitalized because in this particular period, this particular asset is qualifying asset. During this particular period, this asset is qualifying asset. So that is why entire net interest of 0.95 will be capitalized. Correct? Now we take case study 15. In case study 15, it is given that on 20th 4, 2019, JLC Limited obtained a loan of 50 lakhs. On 20th of April 2019, whenever it is given 20th April, 13th April, 29th April, you presume as if you took the loan on 1st of April. Is it clear to you? Because it, interest calculation will start never ever from the midway in the what we call month. It always starts from 1st of April, 1st of the month. So you presume you took the loan on 1st of April 2019, number one. And at loan amount, you have taken 50 lakh. And out of this loan, you have used 20 lakh for the construction of a shed. And out of 50 lakhs, you have used 15 lakh for purchase of a machinery. And out of 15 lakh, you have kept 10 lakh as working capital. And out of 50 lakh, you have used 5 lakh to pay advance for purchase of a truck. Now, question says that in March 2020, the construction of the set was completed. Remember one thing, you took the loan on 1-4, on 1-4-2019 an accounting year is ending on 31st of 3-2020 total 50 lakhs worth of load you have taken and further it is given that total interest which you have paid for the year is 9 lakh that means on 50 lakhs of loan you have paid interest of 9 lakh question is that out of this 9 lakh, how much I should capitalize and how much I should actually charge to profit a loss account. Next point which you need to understand here is that construction of the said question says that completed in the month of March. That means for the entire year, this particular shed was under construction. If this shed is under construction, that means for the entire year, this asset is qualifying asset. And if the asset is qualifying, whatever interest related to this particular period in connection with what we call this construction is, that will be capitalized. For example, out of 50 lakhs, you can say it this way. On 50 lakhs, I am paying an interest of 9 lakh. And 
out of 50 lakhs, I have used 20 lakhs for the construction of the set. So what will be the interest related to the construction? You will compute it in this manner. 9 by 50 lakh into 20, whatever it is, this interest will be charged, will be capitalized. Correct? Why it will be capitalized? Because this asset is a qualifying asset. However, when I am going to purchase the machinery, machinery is already, it is not a qualifying asset, it is, it is already ready to use. Similarly, working capital, working capital is not an asset. It is, a, uh, it, I mean to say, it is not a fixed asset. It is a sort of, you can say, your current item. And with respect to current asset or current liability, borrowing cost will not come into play. Correct. Similarly, advance for purchase of truck. truck. Don't go for the trucks. Go for advance. Advance is your prepaid expenses. Again, it is an item of current nature. No question of what we call any capitalization or borrowing cost. So point here is that working capital and what we call prepaid expenses, that is advance, are not qualifying asset. Even machinery is not qualifying asset. So whatever interest is related to these three items, that interest will be treated as, as I've already told you, revenue expenditure. Here I have given the solution. Treatment of interest as per India's 23, construction of shed is a qualifying asset. So how much interest you are going to capitalize? That is 9 divided by 50 on 20, 3.60. And purchase of machinery is not a qualifying asset as it is already ready for use. So you will compute the interest on the machinery. Total expenditure is 50 lakh. On 50 lakh, total interest is 9 lakh. So what will be the interest on 15 lakhs? So that is 2.70. Similarly, you can compute on working capital and on what we call advance. So whatever the interest related to these three items, this particular interest will be treated as revenue expenditure. And of course, 3.60 will be treated as capital expenditure. Similarly, case study 16. On 1-4-2019, V895 Limited, it is a company, it is engaged in construct, construction business and obtained a loan of 32 crores to be utilized as follows. Correct? Construction of ceiling. First of all, you need to understand that it took a loan of 32 crores. 32 crores. Now, construction of ceiling across two cities and just to confuse you, it is given that work held uh, for a month during the year due to high water delays. We have just seen earlier that if we hold the work because it is a necessary condition so that we can safely complete the project because high water, it is a necessary condition. Correct high water delays. Because of high water, it is unsafe to continue the work. It is better to stop the work for a one month. But it is not going to have any material impact in the sense because work is suspended, but borrowing cost will not be suspended. We will still continue capitalizing the cost even in this particular month. That means construction of C is construction of C link, which is, is considered as a qualifying asset because construction of C link, that means the construction work is still on. So we will, for, so whatever interest on this asset for the 12 months will be considered as capitalized, capitalized expenditure. Is it clear to you or not? So construction of C link across two cities, even though it is given that work held for one month, it is not going to have any impact because even for this one month when the work was stopped, we are not going to stop the capitalization or borrowing cost. We will continue. That means for the entire 12 months, we will capitalize the borrowing cost in respect of construction of C. Purchase of equipment and machinery, it is not a qualifying asset. Working capital is not a qualifying asset. Purchase of vehicle is not a qualifying asset because already they are ready for use. Advance is an item of current nature. It is not a qualifying asset. Purchase of technical know-how, not a qualifying asset. Now, it is also given to you that total interest charged by the bank is 80 lakh. On 32 crores worth of loan, interest is 32 lakh. So, how much interest I am going to capitalize? Construction of ceiling across two cities. Yes, it is a qualifying asset. And I will capitalize 62 lakh 50 thousand. How I have computed it? Pay attention. Total is 32 crores, correct? Total is 32 crores. On 32 crores, I am paying an interest of 80 lakhs. 
So what proportion of the interest will be in respect of 25 crores, that is the expenditure or ceiling, that is equal to 62,50,000. And rest of the item you can find out the interest because all the rest of the items I have already sold, told you that they are not qualifying assets. So interest on those items will be considered as revenue expenditure while interest on ceiling will be considered as capitalized expenditure. Similarly, you can do this question of your own case study 17. It is given similar to the last one that on 1-4-2019 W800 Limited, which is engaged in bridge construction, obtained a loan of 64 crores to be utilized as follows. So this time we have taken a loan of 64 crores. Loan of 64 crores. And it is also given... And it is also given that on 64 crores, we are paying an interest of 1.6 crores. 1.6 crores interest. Further, it is given, similar to the last, last question, construction of, construction of Sea Hill Link Bridge across two cities. And again, it is given that work is held for one month. But it is also given that heavy rains are quite common in that particular area. So again, in this case, a stoppage of work is a necessary condition for the final completion of the project. So we are not going to stop the capitalization of the borrowing cost. So out of 64, 1.6 crore is the total interest. And out of 64 crore, 50 crore, 50 crores have been used in the construction of this. So this much of interest will be capitalized. While purchase of equipment, as I told you, is not a qualifying asset, it is not a qualifying asset, working capital is not a qualifying asset, purchase of vehicle is not a qualifying asset, advance is not a qualifying asset, purchase of technical know-how is also not a qualifying asset. So after computing the interest, correct, you simply deduct this interest from 1.6, so whatever leftover interest is there, that particular interest will be treated as revenue expenditure, although I have given a detailed solution over here. Then question states that, another case study, as a company auditor, how will you react to the following situation? Interest on loan borrowed to purchase machinery which has been installed two years back is still debited to machinery account. Now, of course, it is wrong treatment because once the, once the machinery is ready and it is installed, after that, interest should not be debited to machinery account. It should be charged to profit or loss account because machinery is no more a qualifying asset. Case study 19, company has obtained a loan of 580 lakhs. 580 lakhs worth of loan we have taken for the modernization of plant and machinery. Now further the question says that plant and machinery acquired under the modernization scheme and installation completed on 31st of March 2016 amounted to 406 lakhs. 406 lakhs. We have taken a loan in this particular case to the extent of 580 lakhs. Out of 580 lakhs, I have already told you, we are spending 406 lakhs on the machinery, correct plant and machinery. And it is given that plant and machinery was stalled on 31st of March 2016. Actually, 31st March of 2016 is the, is the end of the current year. That means for the whole year, this particular machinery was under construction. So you are going to treat it as a qualifying asset. This will be considered as qualifying asset. Question has also given this particular fact that on 580 lakhs worth of loan, on 580 lakhs worth of loan, it is given in the question that 52.2 uh, lakh is the interest for the year 2015 and 16. So 52.20 is the interest on 580 lakhs. So what will be the interest on 406 lakh? That is the amount related to plant and machinery. That is interest will be 36.54. It will be capitalized. Further, the question says that out of 580 lakhs, 58 lakhs have been advanced to a supplier for additional asset. So advance is not treated as qualifying asset. Similarly, 116 lakhs has been utilized for working capital purpose. Even working capital is not a qualifying asset. So if you are going to compute the interest on these two assets, it will be equal to 5.22 and 10.55. Needless to add that these items will be treated as treated as revenue nature expenditure.
case study 20 you can do it of your own and even case study 21 you can do it is easy case study 23 theoretical case study 24 very simple you can do it of your own even case study 25 also you can do it of your own case study 26 27 now we come over to the next topic that is journal borrowing and generally questions have asked from this lots of questions have been asked from this particular topic what we mean by general borrowing there are a specific type of borrowing specific means when we take the loan particularly for the purpose of acquisition construction or production of an asset however general borrowings means we have taken for taken it for some general purpose general borrowings are also known as non-specific borrowings so you will be able to understand it when we will go through a question case study 28 says that E15 Limited began a construction of new building on 1-4-2021. We began a construction of new building. It is clearly mentioned that it obtained a loan of 1 lakh and which is a special loan. A special loan means a specific loan. So 1 lakh loan was specifically or especially taken to finance this particular project. Because we started constructing a new building on 1-4-2021, we obtained a 1 lakh worth of loan to finance the construction of the building at an interest rate of 10 percent at an interest rate of 10 percent we took the loan this is a special loan or a specific loan question also states that companies other outstanding non-specific loans non-specific loans mean general borrowings this company has already taken some general borrowings and general borrowing one is 5 lakh at 11 percent and general borrowing 2 is 9 lakh at 13 percent interest further it is also given to you that expenditure on the building project because we are constructing the building on 1 4 2021 we spent 2 lakh and on 1 7 2021 again we spent 2 lakh 50 thousand and on 1 10 2021 again we spent 4 lakh 50 thousand and on 1 3 2021 we again spent 1 lakh 20 thousand question says that building was completed by 31st of 3 2021 now question states that calculate the amount of interest to be capitalized and pass entries so in case of general borrowings whenever there will be a case of general borrowings how the calculation need to be done you need to understand it very well under your first step you need to compute the average accumulated expenditure what we mean by average accumulated expenditure just pay attention for example total amount which we spent on construction of building in the current year if i will add all these items 2 lakh 2 lakh 50 4 lakh 50 1 lakh 50 it will tell me it will tell me the actual amount which we spent in the construction of the building however the spending was on different different dates for example on 1 4 2021 we spent 2 lakh so i have written here 2 lakh into 12 by 12 that mean if i am going to divide 2 lakh by 12 that mean i am getting average expenditure of one month and because ultimately i will have to see in the light of the entire year current year which is of 12 months so 2 lakh divided by 12 is average expenditure of one month by multiplying it with 12 i get the what we call amount which i have spent in the current accounting year now just have a look over 2 lakh 50 now suppose if i'm going to divide 2 lakh 50 thousand by 12 i get what we call something near about 20,833 that means average expenditure per month is 20,833 because we spend this amount in the month of 1st of July and if I will compute the time period from 1st July till the end of the current accounting year then it will be 9 months so for 9 months that mean your expenditure will be 1,87,500 are you getting my point or not because every month we are spending some amount so and this amount which we spend was used or effectively used for nine months only so we can say that average expenditure in the current year 
out of 2 lakh 50 is 1 lakh 87,500 only and similarly 4 lakh 50,000 we spent on 110 2021 if I will divide it by 12 it will tell me per month expenditure and from 110 2021 till 31st of 3 2022 six months will be there so for six months the expenditure will be actually 2 lakh 25 that means out of 4 lakh 50 effectively in the current year we may say because every expenditures per month we are computing and multiplying it with the remaining time period for example as i told you 2 lakh divided by 12 first i am computing one month expenditure because this expenditure was incurred in the beginning so for 12 months that is per month expenditure into 12 similarly here 2 lakh 50 divided by 12 that is giving me per month expenditure but this expenditure was incurred on 1 7 2021 so on the basis of per month expenditure for the next nine months correct i will compute the expenditure and so on and similarly this expenditure was incurred on 1st of march 2021 1 lakh 20 divided by 12 first of all and then multiply it with only one month because here we are using it for only one month so i will get 10000 that means even though actually i have spent this much of amount but related to current year on the average basis i may say the expenditure is 622500 is it clear to you or not that is what we mean by accumulated expenditure average accumulated expenditure so after computing the average expenditure it means you have spent on an average basis six lakh twenty two thousand five hundred but the problem is that how can you spend six lakh twenty two thousand five hundred on the construction of the building in the current year if you have taken a loan of only one lakh for the purpose of construction because it was clearly given in the question that we took a loan of one lakh for the construction of the building correct See here, I have written total expenditure incurred 6,22,500 and now I have written here financing. Out of a specific borrowing, because a special loan of 1 lakh was taken for the construction of the building, so quite obviously the financing of 6,22,500 must have been done out of a specific loan of 1 lakh. Then what about 5,22,500? The financing of this 5,22,500 must be from the general borrowings. Correct? That means this time we are using some amount which we have taken for general purpose for financing this particular project. Correct? So, your third step will now be calculation of weighted average interest because your general borrowings are of two types one general loan you have taken at 11 percent another general loan you have taken 13 percent and you have spent 5 lakh 22,500 out of this 14 lakh of general loan to finance this particular project so first of all i will have to compute the oh, average interest we call it weighted average interest i will compute 11 percent of 5 lakh to get 55,000 i will compute 13 percent of 9 lakh to get 1 lakh 17,000 total interest is 1,72 and I will divide 1,72 by 14 lakh so I will get the weighted weighted average rate of interest with respect to general borrowings as 12.285 when we say we are computing weighted average rate of interest it means we are computing weighted average rate of interest in connection with the general borrowings is it clear to you so now you have the rate of interest of special borrowings you have the rate of interest now of general borrowings so now you are in a position to find out how much interest you are going to capitalize so specific borrowings because you have used one lakh worth of specific borrowings so simply you will take the 10% 10,000 will be capitalized and out of general borrowings of 14 lakh you have used 5 lakh 22,000 for the construction of the building and the rate of interest of the general borrowings is 12.285 average rate of interest so 64,189 so total interest which you are going to capitalize will be 74,189 74,189 and finally under the fifth step amount to be capitalized for building actually how much amount now I'm going to capitalize first of all I will compute the total amount which we have spent actual amount is spent not average expenditure actual amount we have spent 10 lakh 20 correct and then we are going to add the interest which we are capitalizing so total capitalization will be 10 lakh 94,189 and my entry will be building account debit to bank account like this. 
Similarly, you can do case study 29 also. Here in this particular case, it is given that Welkin's formations began construction of a new plant on 1-4-2020 and they obtained a special loan of Rs. 4 lakh to finance the construction of the plant. So a special loan means specific loan of 4 lakh has been taken and the rate of interest on this specific loan is 10%. Now this time, it is given to you that expenditure was made on the project as follows. These are, if I will total it, of 5 plus 12, 17 plus 2, 19. 19 lakh is total actual expenditure. But problem is that this expenditure has been made on different, different dates. So similar to the last question, my first target should be to compute the average accumulated expenditure. But before that, it is also given that company's other outstanding non-specific loan is 23 lakhs at 12%. Now, because this time, general borrowings, that is non-specific loan, is just 23 lakh. This time, there is only one general borrowing. So, we need not require to compute the weighted average rate of interest with respect to general borrowings, because this time, it is given that we have taken a general borrowing, so 23 lakhs at 12%. So, rate of interest of general borrowings is already given to us. In the last time, there were two types of general borrowings with different rates of interest. So, that is why we had to compute in the last question, correct the weighted average rate of interest. But this time, there is only one general borrowings and its rate of interest is given. So, I need not require to find out what we call weighted average rate of interest. Is it clear to you or not? So, as usual, first of all, I am going to compute the average accumulated expenditure. On 1-4-2020, we have spent 5 lakh. Divide 5 lakh by 12 and then compute the period remaining till the end of this period 12. So, 5 lakh divided by 12 into 12 is equal to 5 lakh. But next expenditure you made on 1-8-2020 and expenditure made is 12 lakh. You divide first 12 lakh by 12. So, per month expenditure is 1 lakh. And this expenditure has been made on 1-8-2020. That been only uh, how many months are remaining. If I am going to 1st of August, so that means 8 months are remaining. So, 1 lakh into 8 will be 8 lakh. That means out of out of 12 lakh, 8 lakhs worth of expenditure is related to the current period effectively. Similarly, on 1-1-2021, 2 lakh worth of expenditure was made. I will divide 2 lakh by 12 and then remaining months are 3. I will multiply it with 3 to get 50,000. That means out of 2 lakh, only 50,000 effectively were used on the construction in this year. That is what we mean by average accumulated expenditure gives you the picture that out of your total expenditure which you made and which was effectively used in the current year. Now calculation of average rate of interest. In this case, you need not require to compute weighted average as I have already told you. 23 lakh into 20%, 2,76,000. Is it clear to you? Because there is only one rate of borrowing is given. General borrowing is 23 lakh into 12%, 2,76 and 2,76 divided by 23 lakh into 100 will give you 12%. In fact, you need not require any step with respect to what we call weighted average in this particular question. You can simply treat 12% as the weighted average rate of interest. Now, amount of interest to be capitalized because we have the rate of interest of specific borrowings and we have the rate of interest of normal borrowing uh, sorry general borrowings so we can now find out so how much interest i am going to capitalize on a special borrowings a special borrowings are 4 lakh so 10 percent interest 40000 i will capitalize and on general borrowings actually out of 13 lakh 50000 try to understand this particular point Average accumulated expenditure is 13,50,000. As far as financing is concerned, 4 lakh must be from the specific borrowings. Correct? This effective expenditure of current year must have been financed 4 lakh by the specific borrowings and rest of the expenditure that is 9,50,000 must have been financed by the general borrowings. By the general borrowings. So, I will compute the now interest because specific borrowings are 4 lakhs, so into 10%. So, 40,000 I will capitalize and then rate of interest of general borrowing is 12%, 9,50 into 12% is equal to 1,14,000. 
So total 1,54,000, 40 plus 1,14,000. So total expenses to be capitalized, 5 lakh, 12 lakh, 2 lakh. Actual expenditure on building, 19 lakh. And plus interest which you have capitalized, 1,54,000. This is how you are going to do. And next question is similar to the one which we did earlier. Case study 30 is similar to the one which we did earlier. And then these case studies you can manage 30 after question number 30. There is case study 31. You can do it. Case study 32 also. And we are left off with now last topic, exchange the difference. We will come over to this particular topic, but we'll take five minutes of rest. And then we will start the third part of this particular uh, standard and finish it up in the next session. In the next session means after the break.
So finally, now we come over to the final part of this particular just mouse sometime play trant. Okay, <clears throat> so now we come over to the final part of this particular standard. Actually, the standard says that borrowing cost, what exactly borrowing costs are? No doubt about that borrowing cost means interest cost, obviously. It also includes the finance charges. Finance charges means when we take the loan, we have to incur file charges, isn't it or not, etc. Some other charges also. So these are finance costs. And besides that, it also talks about exchange differences. In fact, the full sentence is ex exchange differences which arise from the foreign currency borrowings to the extent regarded as an adjustment to interest cost. The third point is exchange difference arising from foreign currency borrowings to the extent regarded as an adjustment to interest cost. What does it mean? So in order to understand, we have kept some heavy studies, two very strong questions, correct? In your module, <coughs> very less is given, but we have covered it very, very comprehensively. Just pay attention. FDX Limited has taken a loan of USD in US dollar on 1st of April 2021 for a specific project at an interest rate of 5%. First of all, you need to understand that you have taken a loan of uh, what we call 10,000 and this loan has been taken in US dollars, correct? So US dollars, that means it's a foreign currency borrowing. So you took the loan on 1-4-2021 and on 1-4-2021 1 you took the loan and interest rate on it is 5%, 5% per annum and of course which you, are, which you are going to pay annually. Further it is given in the question that on 1st of April 2021 the exchange rate between the currency is this much. It is also given to you now in the question is that when you took the loan on 1 for 2021, correct, uh, rupees 45,000, rupees 45,000 is equal to $1, is equal to $1. That means we will have to churn out 45 rupees to seek $1. This was the exchange rate. However, by the end of the year, on 31st of 3, 2022, on 31st of 3, 2022, now the exchange rate is rupees 48, which is equal to $1. Correct? Now just think of this particular fact, because this rate has turned unfavorable for you. Why it has turned unfavorable to you? Because you have got a foreign currency loan of $10,000. $10,000. And at that time, the rate was 45. So, Initial recording of this loan, you must have recorded this loan at 4,50,000. Correct, this foreign currency loan in Indian currency is equal to 4 lakh rupees 4,50,000 on 1st of April 2023. But by the end of the current year, when you will record this loan, you will record this loan at 10,000 into 48 because now, the rate is 48, so 4 lakh 80 thousand. That means there is a loss of 30 thousand. Generally, if there is a loss in the foreign currency borrowing, generally, if there is a loss in the foreign currency borrowing, that loan is debited to the asset account. Generally, this loan, generally, this loss is debited to the relevant asset account. Correct? Generally, this loss, foreign currency loss, is debited to 30 thousand. However, this standard says that if we have taken the loan in foreign currency and for the purpose of, of course, any acquisition, construction or production of a fixed asset, in that particular case, we cannot debit the entire amount of loss. That means we cannot capitalize the entire amount of loss. We can capit. What portion of this loss can be capitalized? Now, that is the major question. We will see that this portion will be capitalized. That is excess of excess of interest on local borrowings, interest on local borrowings less interest on foreign currency borrowings, foreign currency borrowings. The excess of interest on local borrowings over interest on foreign currency borrowings only 
out of this can be actually capitalized and rest will be charged to a statement of profit and loss account. That is the meaning of the third part which I was trying to tell you about the borrowing cost. Borrowing cost includes interest cost, it includes finance charges and it includes this point. Is it clear to you? So, first of all what you need to do first of all you need to find out the loss due to exchange rate which i have already computed that is thirty thousand, and which you can compute it very easily initially your loan is ten thousand into 45 which you must have recorded but by the end of the year the exchange rate is 48 so your loss is equal to thirty thousand rupees now after this what you are supposed to do after this you compute interest on foreign currency borrowings your foreign currency borrowings, you have taken a loan of 10,000, you multiply it with rupees 48. Now, very important to understand when you will compute the interest because you will have to pay the interest at the end of the year. You have taken the loan in the beginning. So, if you will have to pay the interest at the end of the year, you will, you will compute the loan amount with the exchange rate at the end of the year. So that is the reason I, am, I have taken here rupees 48 now into 5%. So interest on foreign currency borrowings is 24,000. Now in this question it is also given that corresponding amount that been corresponding loan could have been borrowed by this entity in local currency at an interest rate of 11%. We have taken this loan in foreign currency. If we would have had taken this loan in local currency then we would have had paid 11% per annum as interest. So the second point is that I have to now find out interest which I would have paid if I would have had taken the loan in Indian currency or local currency. Now $10,000 try to understand. Now here I have multiplied it with 45 because I took the loan in the beginning. So what amount of loan I took in the beginning for rupees 4 lakh 50. So if rupees 4 lakh 50 thousand I would have taken in India, correct? Then I would have paid an interest of 11%. My interest would have been 49,500. I just told you out of this 30,000, what portion will be capitalized now? So the difference of these two, excess of interest, excess of interest on local borrowings over foreign borrowings. First we compute the what we call difference of these two. The difference of these two is 25,500. This difference is nothing but it is known as excess of interest on local borrowings over what we call foreign borrowings. Correct? The interest on foreign borrowings. So out of 30,000, total loss was 30,000. Out of 30,000, now we may say that 25,500 can be capitalized and balance 4,500 will be charged to statement of profit and loss account. This is the point only. And now similarly, you can do this next question. In the next question, honestly speaking, you will find the first of all exchange loss and then you will find out the what we call interest on local borrowings and foreign currency borrowing. Now we will see that interest on foreign currency borrowings is 45,600. Uh, sorry, excess of interest on local borrowings over interest on foreign currency borrowings is 45,600. But exchange lo loss is only 40,000. So this time nothing can be capitalized. So entire 40,000 will be treated as what we call uh, a statement of profit or loss account. The reason being is that in this particular case, there is no excess of interest on local borrowings over foreign currency borrowings. I will explain the point. In this case, Y777 Limited has taken a loan of 20,000 in the beginning of financial year for a specific project at an interest rate of 6% per annum. Actually, this is $20,000. And on the date of taking the loan, the exchange rate was 48. And the exchange rate of the loss, uh, sorry, exchange rate at the close of the year is rupees 50. So first of all, we will have to find out the loss. Now, what will be the loss? Total 20,000. And when we took the loan, when we took the loan, the exchange rate was actually 48. And by the end of the year, the exchange rate has moved to 50. Moved to 50. So dollar twenty thousand into 2 will be my exchange loss. Due to exchange loss due to exchange rate. So rupees 40,000 is my total exchange loss. Now the question is, what portion of this loan can be capitalized and what portion of this loan should be treated as revenue expenditure? Generally, as I have told you, only that portion can be capitalized that is excess of interest on 
foreign interest on local borrowings, less interest on foreign currency borrowings. So I will have to compute interest on local borrowings. Now question says that the corresponding loan could have been borrowed in Indian currency at an interest rate of 11% because the loan amount is dollar twenty thousand, and I took the loan in the beginning when interest rate was 48. It is very important when you will compute the interest on local borrowings, you will consider the initial rate because on this date you took the loan and same loan if you would have taken in from India, the amount would have been 20,000 into 48 and on this you are going to pay interest of 11%. So interest on uh, interest on local borrowings would have been what is the amount of local borrowings okay i will compute it 20000 into 48 into 11 percent that is equal to 105600 that means if i would have had taken the loan from india in that case, I would have paid at the rate of 11% and the amount of interest would have been 1,5,600. Now, I will compute interest on foreign currency borrowings. Because foreign currency borrowings is $20,000 and at the end of the year, the amount of the loan, because at the end of the year, I will have to pay the interest, I will find the amount of the loan at the end of the year, 20,000 into 50 because exchange rate is 50. And foreign currency borrowing has been taken at 6%, at 6%. So in this case, it will be equal to rupees 60,000. So what is the amount of excess? Now, if I am going to compute the amount of excess, see, you will get the excess amount is minus this. This is equal to 45,600. 45,600 is the excess amount. I just told you out of 40,000, the excess amount can be capitalized, but the excess amount is 45,600. So in this case, entire 40,000 will be capitalized. Sorry, I think earlier I told you wrong. Now I solve the question. So I would say that entire 40,000, we cannot capitalize 45,600, but we can capitalize 40,000. Correct? So entire 40,000 will be capitalized and nothing will be charged to statement of profit and loss account because excess of interest on local borrowings over foreign currency borrowing is 45,600. So to the extent of 40,000 we will capitalize and nothing will be charged to statement of profit or loss account. It has clear answer is correctly given. Correct. But I told you earlier wrong. So correct answer is that entire 40,000 will be charged to capitalized will be capitalized and nothing will be charged to statement of profit or loss account. So these are the two questions. After this, also, I have given two theoretical disclosure and case study 36, correct? These are theoretical, you can manage it. Then difference also I have given, although it is not needed. And then revision also I have given. So comprehensively, we have covered this particular standard. I hope that it must have had come up to your expectation. Looking forward to have your feedbacks as always. And obviously, then we are going to meet you again with something new in the next session. So till then, it's time to say goodbye.